Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jewel Tolentino here. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be doing an overview of the main features of Camtasia 2020. All right, so I'm so excited because Camtasia just released their latest version, and I have been using Camtasia since 2010 when they had Camtasia version seven. So I'm gonna be going through some of the main features and I'm gonna share my opinion whether it is worth it to do the upgrade or not. All right, so first thing you notice is when you open Camtasia 2020, there's now a new tab here that says new from template. So I'm gonna click on that and it takes you to a window like this and they've got one already preloaded here and this is a template that can be used to streamline your video editing. So for example, I, I could use a template like this when I'm editing these kinds of tutorials. You know, when you have a tutorial video, you have an intro, an outro, some things that pop up during the actual edit, just things that you always put in your videos. So it's cool that they have these templates here. And if you click on download more templates, it takes you to a page like this. And this is the Camtasia assets. So it's TechSmith assets for Camtasia. And like I said, these are templates to help you edit. So for example, if you're editing course lectures, this, this one right here would be for course lectures. And if you hover over it, it'll show you like a preview. And that can be like an intro for your course lecture. Now this would be helpful to us because we actually do create courses and something like this would actually look really good. So they have different ones here. There's free ones and then they also have paid ones. And you can probably go in here and change the colors of things. And obviously you change the text to your own text. So I will be definitely creating a separate tutorial for templates because I want to create one for when I'm editing these videos for our YouTube channel. All right, so we are in the new Camtasia 2020 dashboard here and I'm going to be switching back and forth from the 2019 version and the 2020 version and I'll verbally say to you which one is which, but if for some reason you don't know, you'll know that it's the 2020 version if it if you see this favorites tab on the left hand side that's how you know it's the 2020 version because the 2019 version and previous versions don't have this and i'll be talking about what this favorites tab is all right so i've got some media preloaded here one video clip and then one audio clip and you'll notice right away that they separated them so in the media bin you will see that there's now videos and audio and it's separated. Before they put them together, but audio would still go down at the bottom, but now it's more clear. And I noticed that there are also different tabs happening here. So you can sort by type, name, duration, size, dimensions, and date added. And then you can sort by ascending or descending. So if I change that, and then, this is cool here, you can change your media bin view. So you can change the way that you want to see this. And I like this because sometimes I'll be editing a vlog or a video that has many media assets. So there's so many pictures, video clips, audio clips, and when you have them one size like this, you end up having to scroll down to see you know, what you've got. And so now you can actually change the view of things. So if I have way more clips, I can see them more easily now. Whereas before the standard was pretty much just like this. So this is gonna make it a lot easier for me when I have projects with a lot of media assets. I really like this feature. And you can also do like a listing feature as well if you just wanna list it out by titles and duration, but we'll leave it to the default. And if you go to the 2019 version, this was the 2019 version. You can see it's just media bin. There's nothing to rearrange things. There's this tab right here, uh, but now you can change the size and the layout of everything and they, they separate it now. So you can see going back and forth to the two different ones. This is 2020, this is 2019. 
They've made this window, uh, your editing view window, a little bit bigger, but you know that you can change that. If it's too big, you can actually make it to whatever size you want that. So the default is now bigger. You can see that there is that favorites tab there and the previous version does not have the favorites tab. Let's head over there and talk about that. So now you can actually favorite different features and different transitions and annotations and things that you use often and you can find them in there and that is really helpful for me because there are standard things that I use all the time when I'm editing videos. So I'm going to go favorite some right now. Let's head over to annotations. So I usually use um, this kind of a text with the block here, the shape. I'm going to save that. I usually have that. Let's go into the transitions. I don't use too many, but if I do, it's usually the fade through black. And I also like the whip transition. That one's a cool one. And the other ones I don't usually use. Behaviors, I this one's my favorite. The pop-up one, I use it all the time for both text and um, images and videos. So I'm going to put that as a favorites as well. And you can literally see I'm just clicking on the star there in the corner of each thing. And let's head back to annotations and the, the blur. I like using the blur as well. And that's about it. That's I don't use um, the other features that, as often as those ones. So now let's go over to the favorites tab. And you can see that it's got all my stuff here that I just favorited. So it's got the pop-up behavior, it's got the fade through black transition, and then it's got the text with the block, the blur, and the regular text. And then you can order these in annotations, transitions, and behaviors. I'll just keep it all together just like that. So that's really cool. All right, another thing I noticed is in the visual effects, I'll head down to visual effects. I'm still here in the 2020 version. Two new things in the visual effects are color tint and the glow effects. So I will be creating different tutorials on how I'll be using these kinds of features, but so far in the visual effects, they've got two new things added here. So let's head over to the record button. This is when you wanna record your screen and yourself at the same time, much like I'm doing right here. I'm actually re recording this on the 2019 version so I can show you the 2020 version. So I'm gonna click record and you'll see the little remote pop up. So this remote here is slightly different. I'm here on a PC right now and you can see before it used to just be camera, microphone and that's it, but now they have system audio. So right now both of these are on X because I'm using the camera and the microphone to record from the 2019 version. So they've added more features and here if you don't want to record the screen you would click that off and you can also choose your recording dimensions or you can move it manually. So right now it's set to full screen I believe, yeah full screen and then you can change that accordingly. I usually always record the whole full screen. Here you would click on the camera to turn it on. Same thing goes for microphone and system audio. So system audio is the audio coming from your laptop. So if you want to record that as well, then you would have that on. And if you don't, then you would click X. So a standard recording for me, I would have the screen on, I would have the camera on, the microphone on, and I always have the system audio on as well. And if it turns out I don't use it, then I usually just edit it out in Camtasia. But here they've given you that extra option. So I'm just going to click X on that. And now if we head down to the tracks here, you'll see some new features here on track one. You'll see that there's an eye, a magnet thing, and then a lock. If you go to 2019 version, it's just the eye and the lock. And the eye part, this, it does more than it did in 2019 and I'll share with you some cool stuff that it does. So this right here, this little alpha track matte mode and the circular thing that I'm about to show you, 
I actually did a DIY method of this video years ago because you had to do it a, very, a much more manual way that took longer and I figured out how to do it on Camtasia. But now with the 2020 version, it's a lot easier now and you don't need to do what I did now in the 2020 version. Obviously, if you don't have the 2020 version, then that video that I created is still still going to work for you. So I'm just going to drag some media down here on the track, track one. And then if you click on the eye, then you know, you don't see it anymore and then you can't touch it. And it's if you want to hide that media. But now if you right click on it, there are some track matte modes. And this is really interesting and I'm definitely going to have to play around with this. But one of the first things that you can do with it is do circular video and how you do that real quick. And I'll have more in-depth tutorial videos on these kinds of features, but just quickly, I will grab a shape. So I'm going to grab the circular shape here. And then I'm going to make it more into a circle. They've kind of given it to you as an ellipse. So, okay. So I've grabbed this circle. Now I'll put it over here and make the circle a little bit bigger. Right now, watch this. I'm going to right click on the eye and I'm going to go to alpha. It makes it circular. So now you see that area now becomes a circle. And you can literally do this with any shape. And I'm gonna be doing more in-depth tutorials so make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel because there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this feature. So you can see that there were many different things. There's alpha, alpha invert, luminosity, luminosity invert. If you go to alpha invert, it's going to be the opposite. So that circular piece is now gonna be black and the other part is going to be shown. So if I click alpha invert, then this part becomes black and then you see everything else. Okay. So now with the magnet here, enable magnetic track. So I'll show you, let's say you're editing. Let me just chop this up here. You know how, when you're editing a video and you are taking out some stuff, you know, let's say I was editing this and then I didn't need this chunk right here. I didn't need this chunk right there. And then there's this space, right? Well, now you can click the magnetic button and then it removes the dead space and puts it all together for you. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to be using this because the way that I edit, I use the keyboard shortcuts and there's a shortcut to actually remove that. So I'm not sure if this is going to work for my workflow, but it's cool to see that you have something like that because to, to put it all together, because usually you would have to drag everything manually before you would literally have to take it and then drag it and then drag it over again. And then that could be time consuming. So that's a cool new feature they've added. Another thing is that you can replace media a lot more easily now. So before, if you wanted to replace something, you had to drag it down and then move some things out of the way to make room for that item and then place it in accordingly. And if you had a lot of stuff in there, it would get kind of annoying to have to highlight everything and make sure that everything is highlighted and that you don't mess it up while you're trying to move everything. So now I'm just going to click delete, put it back. So now let's say I want this to replace something on there. I want it to replace the middle. So I would click the middle one, then head over to the one that I want to replace it with right click and then here go replace selected media on the timeline and I'm going to click replace from start and then boom, there you go. It is replaced from the start of that video. Another thing is that you can also easily place footage in between two pieces of footage. So if you take this clip and you want to squeeze it over here, 
you can now do that before you had to move things out of the way and then slide that one in and then make sure it's all lined up again. But now you can just, as you saw, it's just easily, you can place it in now. So you can change the order of things really easily. So if you're like, oh no, this clip was, I want it over here, then you can place it in there. Another cool thing is when you're working on projects, you can right click in your media bin and delete unused media or select unused media. So there are so many times where, you know, I'm editing a travel vlog or something and there are so many clips and I don't use all of them. And sometimes I, you know, have to play this memory game in my head and, you know, go through and, and see the clips and, and be like, okay, did I use that one already or did I not? And then I usually need to double click and actually watch the thing. And you know, that takes time. Whereas now you can either just delete the unused media if you want to make your project file smaller and just have it take up less space. Or now you can select unused media and have it show you which media you haven't used yet. So I'll click select unused media and right there it's showing me that out of the two clips here, I haven't used this audio yet. So that's really cool that it, it's gonna point that out to me. Again, that's gonna be useful when you have a lot of different types of media. All right, so is it worth to do the upgrade to the 2020 version? Well, first of all, I wanna state that if you have the maintenance package, then you actually do get a free upgrade to the 2020 version. So we pay an, an annual maintenance fee. For us, it's like 60 something Canadian. And then that allows you free upgrades. If you don't have that package, then you need to pay for the upgrade. And I believe for us, the upgrade would be 100 something Canadian. I can't remember exactly maybe 120, 130 Canadian to get the upgrade. So if you already have the maintenance package, you already have access to the 2020 version because you get that with your maintenance package. So you can just upgrade for free. If you have to pay from the 2019 version to the 2020 version, I would say that if I had to pay 130, 120 extra to get the upgrade, that if I was at 2019 version, I wouldn't say it's worth it to get the 2020 version at that price point for the current upgraded new features. If I was at 2018 version to 2020, then I would totally pay for the the upgrading fee of 120, 130. I, I don't know the exact price. Then it would be worth it to do the jump from there at that price point. But in my opinion, I think that you should get the maintenance package and get the free upgrade yearly. I use Camtasia on an everyday basis for our YouTube channel. Like 97% of the videos have been edited with Camtasia and we have over 1200 videos on our channel alone. So I've been using this software since 2010 and I've seen them grow so much and this latest version is the best version. So it really depends on how serious of a user you are with Camtasia. If you're a frequent user, I would recommend getting the maintenance package so you get free upgrade. If you're at 2018 version, I would recommend the upgrade to 2020. If you're at 2019 right now and you're a little bit iffy, if, it, if money's tight or whatever, you don't need the upgrade. You can still do so many things. You can still edit amazing videos without these features. But if you do have the cash to spend, then get the upgrade. So it really depends where you're at. So if you are interested in getting Camtasia, you guys can head down to the description below. That is our affiliate link. And if you found this video helpful, we would really appreciate it if you used that link. I have hundreds of free Camtasia tutorials on this channel, so make sure you guys are subscribed. If you want something a little bit more advanced, I also have a course on Camtasia with over nine hours of tutorials. I'm always trying to be creative and create new things to do with Camtasia, so there are a lot of tutorials in there where I manage to make up the process of how to do something, and you can't find those tutorials anywhere else. And if you guys are interested in one-on-one -on -one Camtasia coaching, I also do that as well. Like I said, I've been using this software since 2010, and if you need hands-on teaching, 
I do one-on-one -on -one Zoom sessions. I take a look at your projects, tell you exactly how to fix it, how to make it better, how to make your projects a lot more creative. All that stuff you can find down in the description below. Stay tuned as I will be releasing a bunch more tutorials on the specific features in Camtasia 2020. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.